This is Undaunted Life, a man's podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Thompson. Let's get into it. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. Guys, that is Psalms 41.7. Here we go. July 4th, 1776, America declares her independence. September the 3rd, 1783, the United States of America officially won the war for independence. January 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed the slaves in America. January 31st, 1865, the 13th Amendment of the United States Constitution, which abolished slavery, was ratified. June 24th, 2022, Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Casey were overturned by the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Guys, this is legitimately one of the greatest days in the history of our country. I'm just so ha- I'm just so happy, man. This I mean, we're literally living through history right now. We're living it right now. There's been so much hurt and so much pain for the last couple of years, especially, but for the last 50 years, millions and millions of babies were murdered in this country. And now we actually have a pathway to make sure that that doesn't happen anymore. And for those of you watching on Rumble and YouTube, Kyle, why are you in a camo shirt? Why do you look like you've been sweating? Why are you covered in dirt? It's because I was literally on my lawnmower this morning. I, t- I told people, I was like, look, I don't know if the, the Dobbs decision is coming down today, but if it does, you, you got to let me know. Uh, my notifications are turned off. I won't be able to hear them or whatever. And so Brandon Vincent, one of the guys from my foxhole, he called me and, you know, he he broke the news to me and he didn't even know he broke the news to me. He thought I already knew. And so, you know, I, I got to kind of sit there, you know, finish my last few uh, strips of grass while I was just kind of thinking through and, you you know, as I was weed eating, I ran out of weed eater string. I was like, okay, okay, I just need to go inside right now and just give my initial thoughts on what's going on. But the, the reason I guess I'm recording now is because I, I haven't consumed any media. I've not listened to a single podcast. I don't know what, you know, Albert Muller thinks of this. I don't know what Ben Shapiro thinks about this. I don't know what anybody at my favorite website thinks about this. So these are just the off the top of my head stuff that, that I feel about what, what, what's happened and what this means. And next Tuesday or Thursday, d- depending upon when I release an interview, I'm going to do a super deep dive. So I'm going to read the decision. I'm going to kind of look at what's going on around the country. I'm going to look at how people are reacting. So expect a much, much deeper episode next Tuesday or Thursday. So if I get something wrong in the next five, 10 minutes of me just kind of flowing, you know, I'm just, I'm excited. Like I'm, you know, I'm upset in a good way, but this is all great. So let me go ahead and get into some of my initial thoughts. So here's the first one. This is a time for great, loud and public joy. We've been sitting here all month, basically having LGBTQ stuff and the abomination that is that lifestyle shoved down our throat loudly by every corporation and all these people on Facebook. And we've just kind of been sitting here and taking it. This is a time, a time for great, loud, public joy. If you want to do that on social media so you can get all the slings and arrows, go for it. If you want to go outside and run around with your shirt off, you know, guys, not ladies, like, great, go ahead and do that. But th- this is a great time. This is not a time for us to kind of golf clap, you know, and hide, hide behind a wall, make sure no one's looking at us. We need to be loud and proud about this. Okay. Just such an amazing, amazing time. Again, it's, it's almost unfathomable that we're living through this. The second thing, so this is maybe the most negative thing that I'll talk about is chief justice. John Roberts can go to hell. I mean, my goodness, I had a feeling this would happen. So he literally, you know, pun intended split the baby here. So he voted with the justices to uphold the Dobbs decision in the state of Mississippi. But then he voted against the other justices on his side in overturning Roe and overturning Casey. Okay. So it was a six, three decision and a five door five, four decision as I describe it right now, or as we kind of see it right now. I mean, this guy is a complete turd of a person. I mean, again, he was put on by a Republican. We thought he was going to be a conservative. And on all these major decisions, he goes with the liberal justices. But literally, thank God, he wasn't able to be the deciding vote on this. Can you imagine if if we didn't have this clear or somewhat clear 6-3 majority or 5-3-1 conservative majority on the court right now? Roberts could have literally screwed up the entire thing. Thank God he didn't have the opportunity. Next thought I have is, The real fight is just beginning. 
Because if you've been listening to the show for any length of time, I have disabused you of the notion that Roe v. Wade all the, being overturned all of a sudden means that abortion is completely illegal in the United States of America. That is not the case by any stretch of the imagination. All it means is the decisions now go back to the states where they can do basically whatever they want. Okay? And so we've been fighting as pro-lifers. I say we haven't been alive this long, but for almost 50 years, we've been fighting the fight against this to get this overturned. And we've been focusing on the federal level of things, but now the fight is going to be happening on state levels because I already saw some headlines popping up as I was just kind of putting my you know thoughts down initially here that there are states that are moving uh, immediately to completely ban abortions for all re- for all reasons and all that. But you know th- that's where the real fight is going to be getting because this kind of gets into my next thought. We are about to see some of the most extreme pro-abortion laws on the books passed in blue states. They're going to happen almost immediately. If they're out of session, they're going to bring them back in session so that they can pass these laws. They're going to basically pass laws. I mean, just look for it. Expect it in California, uh, Illinois, New Jersey, New York. You know, expect laws where it's abortion up to the moment of birth and taxpayer funded and for any reason, right? Some of them have already signaled that they're doing that. Some of them have already have already done that. Uh, you know, we need to applaud the about, you know, 25 to 30 pro-life red states that are going to move to basically eradicate abortion completely. But guys, if you live in a purple state, this is so important. This is so important. If you live in a purple state, in a toss-up state or kind of a squishy red state, you need to message your Congress people today and tell them to move towards, you know, complete banning, complete criminalization of all abortions. Let them know that you are behind them. Because the mainstream media is going to swing super far and super loudly to the left on this issue. And they're already framing it as the Supreme Court undoes 50 years of precedent as if precedent matters. Because they don't care about precedent and any of the other things that they care about, that they like, any of the other decisions that they like. They only like it for this one, right? So if you live in a purple state, you have to get ready for the fight with everything that you have in order to protect life. My next thought is... Expect wailing and gnashing of teeth like we literally have never seen before. Now, there have been some conservative commentators, Matt Walsh is one that comes to mind, that says he doesn't think there's really going to be any any riots or any looting or any burning or anything like that. He thinks people are just going to kind of get mad for a second and go away. I could not dis- – there, there's a, several people like him that, that think that. I could not be more on the opposite side of that issue. I think that we are going to see – perhaps worse than what we saw in the summer of 2020 when George Floyd died in police custody and all of a sudden there were riots all across the globe, but especially in every major city in the United States. $2 billion worth of damage, a couple of dozen people killed, thousands and thousands of people injured. Um, We're going to see that. We're absolutely going to see that. And it's partially because this is the sacred cow of people that have this, you know, materialist, secular, satanic, you know, leftist worldview. This this is kind of what, what we could grow to expect from them because this was their number one thing. We have to keep the right to for people to kill their babies. And all these offshoots of Marxism, so uh, critical, uh, you know, race theory and, you know, the racial mobs and feminism and all these different things, they are all going to coalesce together to fight against this, to go crazy. The justices' lives, that the ones that pass this, so that is uh, Thomas, Alito, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Coney Barrett, they, they, their lives are basically going to be on the line for the rest of their careers. They have to have uh, protection for the rest of their careers because they are going to be targeted for this. Um, it's going to be just an extreme situation that we're going to be dealing with. And Shelby the Stoic, you guys will know him well, Shelby Bullard, he's he's one of my foxhole guys uh, that I've uh, mentioned on the show several times. He called me about 30 minutes after Brandon Vincent called me, and he's like, hey man, you know, this is crazy, and we're just having a quick talk. But he said something that was so apropos, that, that was so to the point, and I hadn't even really thought of it, because I, you know, I, I was still kind of, you know, buzzing about it, and still, you know, covered in sunscreen and dirt and all that. He said one of the worst parts, not the worst part maybe, but one of the worst parts about the leak several weeks ago that this decision was coming is that it gave pro-abortion, you know, anti-American, Antifa, you know, Marxist types folks, it gave them time to get super organized to bring the chaos that we're about to see. Because the thing that happened with the George Floyd thing is, as far as we know, that the world didn't know that was going to happen that day. And so they were kind of scrambling like, okay, who can bring a pallet of bricks and drop it in uh, downtown Minneapolis so people can grab them and throw them through windows and all those different things. And so it was kind of like a, a little bit scattered. But for weeks now, these people and all of their funders and all the people that back that back them and get them ready to go and basically deploy them out all over the country and all over the globe, they have been getting ready. 
we are going to see a highly organized chaotic response to this. Guys, and I'm recording this at, I'm literally, it's 1047 a.m. Central Standard Time as I'm saying this right now. I would be shocked if by lunchtime we don't already see places burning in the United States of America. I certainly hope that I'm wrong, but I think it is going to be insane. So to all you guys, you've got to keep your head on a swivel, especially if you live in one of these major cities. Another thing that Shelby said is he's like, as soon as they're done, done burning the major cities, they're going to move to the suburbs. And so I live in a suburban community. We think that we're, you know, kind of untouchable out here. Absolutely not. If you are a concealed carry person, make sure your concealed carry is on your person. Like if, if your wife or whatever is, it needs a concealed carry, make sure that you take care of that. This might be a good time to, to make sure that you travel as a family. Maybe don't let the wife and kids go any place alone. You never know when they turn down a street and all of a sudden there's a bunch of people with signs and Molotov cocktails and bricks, and maybe she doesn't know how to get out of there. Those are conversations that need to be had right now. You need to have those things right now. Again, this could be alarmist. I could be full of crap. I could be speaking completely out of my butt. I hope I am, but I really don't think so. I think the response is going to be grave, which kind of leads me to this. Every governor of a red state, so I'm also calling on my governor here, Kevin Stitt in the state of Oklahoma, they need to right now immediately guarantee the protection of pro-abortion people, pregnancy resource centers, and their employees. Okay, so pro-abortion people just in general, right, that might be doing things publicly to to display their joy that might be targeted, but every pregnancy resource center should have police officers outside it right now protecting those buildings because guess what? You know what doesn't stop? Because people are crazy and angry and and going nuts. What doesn't stop is the women and children that need those pregnancy resource centers to help them survive and thrive. Okay, that those things don't just pause because some people are pissed off that they don't get to kill babies whenever they want anymore. And so these governors should move immediately, whether it's, you know, local police, sheriff's departments, uh, National Guard, whatever. They should deploy them immediately to protect these areas because those have been one of the most highly targeted areas since this leak of the draft opinion came out weeks and weeks ago is those places are being vandalized. They're they're having paint outside of them. They're being picketed. They're, They're disrupting the people that need to go in there and get services. Red state governors need to do that immediately. I would call on purple and blue state governors to do the same, but I'm assuming that they will not. Another thing that I was just kind of thinking through as I was taking my notes down is I never actually thought that this day would come. I mean, I I really didn't. I mean, some of you guys have been listening to us from the very beginning, 2017, and I've probably said on here multiple times that I don't know that we're ever going to see Roe v. Wade overturned. I'm sure I've said something like that before. I'm sure that I talked about. I remember on one episode, I'm just thinking vaguely, there was just a couple, like I was talking about the breakdown of the Supreme Court and who I thought would vote to to get rid of this and who I thought wouldn't and how I didn't really think it would happen. And this was before, you know, ACB was, was brought up and put on the court and all these different things. But in my heart of hearts, I'm so pessimistic just in general. I just never thought this could possibly happen. And that may sound crazy because as a Christian, you would think, Kyle, you should be optimistic about everything because God is ruling and reigning, you know, know, right now and he's sovereign and, and he can do whatever he wants and he can draw straight lines with a crooked stick. But I'm glad I was wrong. Like on all these things, I'm so super duper unbelievably glad that I was wrong. And one of those things that I was wrong about goes into my next thing. I was wrong about Donald Trump. I, I was right about a lot of things that he's a raving narcissist, that he's petty that he's, he's like a child in a lot of things. He says and does a lot of stupid things that I wouldn't do. But as of right now today, on June the 24th, 2022, Donald J. Trump is officially the most pro-life president in the history of the United States and thus one of the greatest presidents in the history of the United States. Because 100 years from now, if we're all still here, if America's still here, We should be able to look back on this moment in history. And you know what they're not going to be talking about, hopefully, in those in those uh, history books or anything like that? It's the fact that Donald Trump said a bunch of really, really stupid crap on Twitter Uh, of all the the craziness that was part of his personal life leading up to when he was in the White House and then in the White House. They're not going to be talking about the fact that he's the only president at that time that had been impeached twice. They're not going to talk about January 6th. They're not going to talk about any of these things. They should and hopefully will be talking about the fact that he put three justices on the Supreme Court that voted to end Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Casey. Again, Alito and Thomas were already there, but Donald Trump got Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett in that order. Just astonishing. Astonishing. 
And, and one of the best immediate reactions I saw was from my buddy and buddy of the show, Samuel Say. So again, this is a, he is Ghanaian, but then he lived in Canada. And now he's in America. So he's getting with the program, you know, in terms of like calling that people out for saying stupid things uh, on Twitter. But he said this uh, almost immediately. And I thought this was great. If the never Trumpers got what they wanted, this would have never happened today. Thank God for Trump's election in 2016. God used a wicked man to end the most wicked Supreme Court ruling in American history. God is infinitely wiser than us. And I also have to give a shout out. I've done this before to my uncle Dan. He and I talked before the 2016 election. I informed him that I, I couldn't in good conscience vote for either Hillary Clinton or Donald J. Trump. I didn't think that they met my basic standards of human decency. And, you know, my, my uncle, who's a lawyer and, you know, a smart guy, he says, Kyle, the Supreme Court is too important. And I remember kind of waving him off like, yeah, yeah, Dan, you know, th he might get one pick, maybe two if we're lucky, but that's not really going to throw the court because we're still going to be 5-4 at that point and, and Roberts is about as squishy as it gets. And so I basically dismissed him. But he didn't get one. He didn't get two. He got three. Ruth Bader Ginsburg died very close to the end of Donald Trump, you know, basically being, you know, ousted from office. And uh, again, it, it's crazy. I'm not going to say something stupid like, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was sacrificed in order for this to happen. But again, the Lord works in mysterious ways. And this potentially is one of those mysterious ways. A very old, uh, sick justice decided to hang on for dear life, hoping she could last until Donald Trump was out of office so that she could be replaced by a Democratic president. And it didn't quite work out for her. It didn't work out for Democrats. I know it's weird to talk about it in political terms because it was the ending of a life, someone that was an image bearer of Christ. But at the same time, we would not be talking about this right now if that hadn't happened. So I'm not going to say, you know, thank God that she died. I'm not going to say that because that's just weird to even think. I'm just spitballing here again. This might be stuff I regret later. But the I'll just talk about Amy Coney Barrett. The fact that Amy Coney Barrett was allowed onto the court before Donald Trump was elected or, you know, not elected out of office. And he was basically kicked out of office by the electorate, as far as we know. It, it's one of the, the most amazing movements of God that I think I've seen. Not necessarily because of Amy Coney Barrett, but because of how powerful the Supreme Court of the United States is and what they showed here. So, man, the Never Trumpers, I am so glad that that didn't work out, and I'm so glad that he ended up being elected. Three years of tremendous progress, uh, and then the last year was in a complete crap show, and then, you know, getting three justices on the Supreme Court. Also, as we wind to a close here, what a way to wrap up Pride Month, right? I mean, here we are, you know, it's been rainbows and drag queens shoved down our throats, all pun intended, for the entire month. Hey, you know, it's okay. Your kids should look at people doing BDSM and, and bondage and ball gags. And, you know, they should, they should just love this because, you know, love or something or uh, tolerance or something. But isn't this worth it? All the nonsense that we've had to stomach for the last three and a half weeks, I think this makes it worth it. But the last thing here, and I'll get you guys out of here, just, just praise God. Praise God that this is literally one of, again, I, I'm kind of repeating myself now, but one of the greatest days that we have ever experienced as Americans, as Christians, this should be a time for our congregations to shout with joy. If your pastor doesn't even mention that uh, this Sunday, stand up and interrupt him in the middle of a sermon about whatever nonsense he's talking about. So if you go to a woke church, you know, and he's talking about rainbows and, you know, interrupt him. If, if you go to a TED Talk church and he's talking about, you know, how uh, you should basically have a budget or how you should, I don't know, like, here's how to be a really cool dude, bro, in order to follow Christ, stand up and interrupt that douchebag and just say, hey, you know, we need to talk about this. If you go to conservative church, if you go to a whatever church, if you're charismatic, I don't care. If you don't normally speak in tongues, speak in tongues randomly. This is a time to live it up. But guys, don't rest on your laurels. Again, the fight is just beginning. There's a lot of people that are going to want to attack you. If you're going to a church this weekend, you are a target. You need to think of yourself that way. Don't be naive and think that you're safe just because you're inside the walls of a church. Understand that the wolf is prowling, prowling around right now looking for sheep to devour, and you need to have the mindset of a sheepdog. But guys, no quick resilience boost today. No outro music. Just joy, praise, and thanksgiving. We'll see you next time.